from around the globe. In sold out arenas and humble churches. From out on the streets. To your screen. And now, the time and what must be done. Part 8. On this edition of Farrakhan Speaks. Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam and that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black people of America, the Western Hemisphere, and black people all over the earth, and a warner to the United States of America and a warner to the nations of the earth. Once again, I'm very pleased to be able to come to you via this broadcast on radio and television, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to talk to you about this most important subject given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, titled, The Time and What Must Be Done. First, I would like to thank all of you who have been tuning in for these last eight weeks to this broadcast. And thank you for telling your friends and neighbors to tune in as well. And a special thank you to our young people who are taking aspects of the lecture and putting it out on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter to create meaningful dialogue with the people. Dialogue over truth is most important. In fact, the highest level of energy comes from the highest level of conversation. And when we are conversing about the Word of God and the time and what must be done, you provoke the highest level of interaction, whether in agreement or not in agreement. The Holy Quran teaches us, argue with them in the best manner and with justice. So there is no need for vitriol, but if God has given you the best arguments, then do as Allah says, argue in the best manner, with respect for one another's thoughts and opinions. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that this present world's time was up in the year 1914. 1914 marked the end of the 6,000 year rule of the Adamic race or the Caucasian people who were made from the original black man but given authority and power to rule over the people of the earth for 6,000 years. That time of their rule is now up. Now, when we say their time of rule is up, why should their time of rule be up? because they were to rule, not in accord with the way of rule of the God of righteousness. They were to rule just the opposite, a contrary rule that would bring about a great 
test of the aboriginal and darker people of the earth. Let us go to the Holy Quran and let's look at this new ruler and his way of rule. It is written in the Holy Quran, quote, And when thy Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angels said, Wilt thou place in it such as make mischief and shed blood? We celebrate your praise and extol your holiness. And Allah said, Surely I know what you know not. The angels were asking God, You are holy. You are the fountain of holiness. And we celebrate and praise you. But what is this that you're doing to place a ruler in the earth that would create mischief and shed blood? But the wonderful God of righteousness said to the angels, Surely, I know what you know not. What he was saying to the angels is even though a time of rule would come in that would bring about 6,000 years of mischief and the shedding of blood, yet at the end of that time, it is written that God would come. As the scripture says, God's coming is after the working of Satan. Well, if you're going to bring into existence a rule of mischief-making that will cause the shedding of blood, this man then is called Satan or the devil. And that's why the scripture says, as by one man sin entered into the world and death came also by sin. All have sinned, therefore death has passed to all men. This means that this contrary way of rule would conquer almost the entire planet of earth and its people. Well, if the end of this world was in 1914 and according to Roger's thesaurus the dictionary tells us as well that mischief is playfulness intended to mock tease or create trouble playfulness. Then the Roger's thesaurus says mischievousness, bad behavior, misconduct, pranks, wrongdoing, tricks, roguishness, devilishment, to do harm, to hurt, to create injury, impairment, damage, detriment, disruption, and trouble. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that this new people were taught a system of tricks and lies that would cause them to create trouble among the righteous, causing them to fight and kill one another. Well, let us see. The end of their world was in 1914. Well, why didn't their world end at that time? It was because out of the beneficence and the mercy of Almighty God, Allah, he gave them a grace period 
of 60 years not to uh, go more than 70 years. But when would that grace period start? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, long looked for uh, by the Muslims, and the great Masi or Messiah looked for by the Jews and the Christians, made his appearance in the world in 1930 in the United States of America, fulfilling what is written in the 24th chapter of Matthew. As lightning shineth from the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be, for wheresoever the eagles are gathered together, there shall the carcass be. This is to teach us that God's coming would be from an easterly direction to the west. And when the Jews and the people were seeking after a sign, Jesus said, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. As I mentioned in a previous broadcast, as Jonah was in the belly of a, the big fish or whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Master Farad Muhammad made his appearance in the heart of the United States of America. The heart of the human being is where the blood, the life fluid of the being is pumped throughout that body. Well, Detroit, Michigan is where Master Farad Muhammad first made his appearance to us. Detroit is called the Motor City. And since this world was founded on Yaqub's playing with two pieces of steel, and he saw one that had magnetic power in it, drawing the other peace under its influence, he told his uncle, I'm going to make a people unalike that will rule you. And again, the uncle answered those words in the Quran, what are you going to make other than that which will create mischief and cause the shedding of blood? But Yaqub also said, I know what you know not. And now we are at the end of a mischief-making, trouble-making, blood-shedding world. And the blood-shedder and the mischief-maker is in the final act of the play where he is doing mischief to the fullest but it is only bringing about his doom. Dear brothers and sisters, the First World War started in 1914. If you add up those numbers, 1914, you get 15. And if you add the five and one, you get six. The Second World War came in 1941. You add those numbers up again, you get six. You add the five and one, and you get a second six. The Korean conflict started in 1950, add those numbers up. Nine and one is 10 and five is 15. You add them up, you get three sixes again. As it is written in the book of Revelations, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, 603 score and six. Along that same line. 
in 1950, while America was prosecuting a war in Korea, at the same time, America was sending advisors and military personnel into Vietnam. And when the French were defeated by the Vietnamese after America had spent over a billion dollars of the taxpayer money supporting the French in their war against the rise of communism in that area to produce what they called containment. Then in 1955, you have America getting more involved in Vietnam. Well, then you have 1961, when America really stepped it up in Vietnam and 1968 was the biggest uh, step up of that war on the basis of a lie by our government uh, bringing the Gulf of Tonkin into the theater of war. 500,000 young American men were sent into Vietnam. We know that over 56,000 of those young men were killed and thousands more were wounded. And even to today, coming out of that war with the use of what is called Agent Orange, these veterans are coming out filled with disease and sickness and it took a long time for the government of the United States to admit that the soldiers were suffering from the after effects of being exposed to Agent Orange. Such is the way our government has treated those who fought in their wars, not necessarily for uh, democracy or for freedom, but to keep a new system of governance called communism from spreading throughout Asia. Well, in 1975, that war finally came to an end. And here we are in 2013. And the drumbeat of war is building up in America, in Europe, in North Africa, in Asia, war is on the horizon. It has been building for all of these years into that final war that the prophets foretold, the war of Armageddon. And in that war, America's power as a warrior will be broken. Europe will be decimated and the rest of the world that has been and is under the dominance of the mischief-making bloodshedder, those people of the world will go free and a new world will be coming in the time and what must be done. Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are living in the day of judgment. Now let's look at the grace period that was given. The end of this world's time, 1914, but the great Mahdi did not come and make himself known to us until 1930. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad met him in 1931. And he was here three years and four months teaching the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And in Detroit, Michigan, he raised over 25,000 black people and gave all of them holy names. Islam was now in America 
Islam was beginning to spread. And so mosque number one gave birth to mosque number two in Chicago, Illinois, which gave birth to mosque number three in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, which gave birth to mosque number four in Washington, D.C., and the foundation of the nation of Islam was set. So how would you count the 60 to 70 years of grace? Where would you start it from? You would start it from the time that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was in this world doing the work of the great Mahdi on his own by himself but guided by the superior wisdom and power of his sender. So from 1934 or 5 to 1975, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed from us, that is 40 years. And from 1975, to 1995, you have 60 years of grace. And in 1995, the greatest witness of the power of God's presence in America among us was seen in the mobilization of black men uh, and women in the Million Man March. It's interesting to see how the government of the United States knew exactly how to count the number of persons that were on the mall four years ago when President uh, Barack Obama was initially elected. And they knew how to count the number of persons that were on the mall just a few weeks ago. Well, they knew then how to count. They said there were only 400,000 persons on that mall. But we had scientists from the University of Boston uh, that knew how to grid those people. We had people go up in helicopters taking pictures of the crowd and later I understand the satellite of the United States government was placed on that march and the grid showed by the United States Army Intelligence 1.8 to 1.9 million people. What was that in 1995 at the end of 60 years of grace? That was a sign of the rise of the black man and woman of America. The most peaceful demonstration in the history of the United States of America took place on that day. Almighty God Allah inspired me to make such a call and God put it in the hearts of black men to respond to that call to such a degree that the world was shocked. Yes, in Washington that day, the city closed down and our great thanks to the former mayor of Washington, Mayor Marion Barry and his lovely wife, Cora Masters Barry and Reverend Willie Wilson and reverence and pastors and nationalist leaders from all over the country, we came together as one people to put this march together, not to petition the U.S. government, but to petition Almighty God Allah and ask his forgiveness for our failure to be the good husbands, the good fathers, the good men, the good brothers that we should be to one another. And on that day, 
a call was made to find a home for 25,000 orphans. And we were able to say that all 25,000 orphans found a new home from the Million Man March. In the off-year congressional election, 1.6 million new black men were registered to vote. And if you recall, I told the people, go and join an organization of your choosing and you must find a spiritual home that will give you the spiritual values that will strengthen you as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a brother. And yes, that day, many black men went out from there and started mentoring young men. And many of them became entrepreneurs from the Million Man March. Well, the government closed down that day. So did the Supreme Court. So did the US Congress. And President Clinton found it expedient to get out of town. But the army was there. They were in underground uh, tunnels waiting for foolishness to begin. And even before the march began, I was told that the Washington police had a place for me that if any riot took place, they would get me out. And I told my then Supreme Captain of the FOI, if anything happens on that day, I will not allow you to take me anywhere on that day. I will die with my people. On that day, the great day, we had 10 more years of extended grace. Black people, we talked that day about economic self-sufficiency. We talked not only on atonement and reconciliation, but accepting responsibility for the condition that we were in and finding a way to work together to solve the problems of our community. You know, the mischief maker is always present. So when the mischief maker saw that 82% of those that were present were Christians. And they responded to the call of a Muslim. They were so upset that in many churches where I was welcomed before the march, they began to preach from the airwaves that Farrakhan is the Antichrist to sow more trouble, to make more mischief, to tell more lies. This is in the nature of the made man and he has made trouble and mischief and caused the shedding of blood all over our planet. Brothers and sisters, I visited Iraq under the so-called dictator Saddam Hussein. I visited Shia mosques, Sunni mosques. I saw Christian churches and Jewish synagogues. But when America went in to Iraq on the basis of a lie, here comes the mischief makers, the bloodshedders, one more time, 
dropping bombs on Iraq called shock and awe, killing tens of thousands of Iraqis, dropping bombs and using weapons with depleted uranium. Yes, and after America's intervention with her European partners, that's when Sunni mosques were bombed. Shiite mosques were bombed. And the differences between these religious bodies was uh, manipulated by the mischief maker. And now Shiites and Sunnis are at each other's throats. And the Christians and the Muslims became enemies of each other when they once lived side by side in peace. My brother, Muammar Gaddafi, that great leader of Libya, America has always seen him as a thorn in its side because Muammar Gaddafi used the oil wealth of Libya to foster revolt against the puppet regimes or client states and their leaders set up by America, by England, by France, by others. So he, Gaddafi, was the object of the most expensive assassination attempt at that time in the history of the world. American planes flew into Libya, bombing Tripoli, bombing Benghazi, killing innocent people. And Gaddafi's young adopted daughter was killed. And some diplomats and others from other embassies were also killed. Gaddafi survived and Libya remained a thorn in the side of America. The mischief maker finally succeeded and Muammar Gaddafi came in out of the cold. He had weapons of mass destruction, which he turned over to America and the Western powers. But he had arsenals of weapons because he had endeavored to arm every Libyan citizen that in case they were attacked, every Libyan household would have an AK-47 and ammunition to keep on firing until the enemies of Libya were vanquished. American senators went over to Libya and promised Muammar Gaddafi that they would give him new arms, conventional arms, which he never received. I warned my brother. I said, Brother Gaddafi, they will never forgive you for what you've done to upset their plans throughout the world. They will not rest until they destroy your revolution and destroy you. He patted me on my thigh as if to say, I understand. But I hope he was not saying to me, I know what you know not because from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
we were taught the very essence of the makeup of the mischief maker. He cannot help himself. He's a liar and the father of lies. This is why uh, Jesus in the book of John was having an argument with the Jews of that day, which is a sign of an argument that we are having similarly today. They were trying to tell Jesus, we are from God. God is our father. Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, well, if Abraham were your father, you would do the works of Abraham. The Quran says Abraham was an upright man and he was not of the polytheists. Then they argued with Jesus, even God is our father. And Jesus looked at those Jewish Sanhedrin, those Jewish writers and scholars of that day. And he said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. Jesus ended up saying, I know you. Your masquerade is over. I know you. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you shall do. He was a liar from the beginning and a murderer, and he abode not in the truth. Remember that Quranic verse, I... God speaking, am going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angel said, what will you place in it except that which will create mischief and shed blood? And Allah answered saying, surely I know what you know not. And the mischief making continues. And the blood shedding continues. But the 60 years of grace, starting in 1935, now 60 years from 35 is 95, 1995, 10 years from that is 2005. Your grace period is up. The beneficence and the mercy of God that he has shown both to black and white, it is up. Surely man is in loss, except those who believe and do good and enjoin one another to truth, and enjoin one another to patience. He has been hitting America and the world with calamities. And as you have noticed, these calamities have been increasing more and more since 2005. And now, we are at 2013. Count up those numbers. Two and one is three. And three makes six. We are at the hour of the doom of America and this world. Believe me. I am not joyous in telling you what I'm telling you. I know that I have put my life in danger. 
and maybe the lives of those who are with me. But to the believers who are doing good based on your belief and enjoining one another with truth and enjoining one another to patience, remember the words of Jesus. They will hate you because they first hated me. Some of you will be cast into prison. Some of you will be beaten. And some will be put to death. The scriptures say they will kill the righteous thinking that they're doing service to God. Oh, America, would that you had listened the window of opportunity for you is all but closed. Not fully, but when it closes, it will be like the door of the ark that Noah built in a desert on dry land. He preached to the people for 150 years. And they laughed at him. They mocked him. They called him a madman. You scribes, you Pharisees, you Sadducees, look at you today. You make mockery of my father, my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and therefore you make mockery of me, his student. You like to tease us and make mockery and make mischief with us. You say that Farrakhan, he needs to be quiet. He's a negative force. No, you are the negative force. I have shed no man's blood. I have lied on no man. I tell you the absolute truth at the cost of my life to warn you that the end of your mischief making has come. The time of the end of your blood shedding has come. And now what you have done to others is now coming upon you. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, justice is the weapon that God would use in the day or time of judgment. This is that time. And what is the law of justice? As a man soweth, the same shall he also reap. As thou hast done, it is written, so shall it be done unto you. Again, Jesus said, you have sown the wind. Now you will reap the whirlwind. The reaping is not just according to what you sow. If you sow one grain of corn, you could get back a stalk and on it seven ears and on each ear a hundred grain. Multiply what is coming to the mischief maker and the blood shedder. You have not repented. You refuse to repent. And I'm calling on you for the last time. Repent of the evil that you have done. And maybe God will have mercy on your soul and give you a further extension of his grace. The law of justice. Let's see how it's working 
in America. Have not you, America, destroyed the cities and the towns and the people of other nations? Well, look at your cities now. Some will be ravaged by fire, others by water. Towns destroyed by tornadoes. Towns destroyed by hurricanes, floods. Soon great earthquakes. Tearing down cities. The chastisement of God has begun. The grace period is over. We are here. But look at how you treat us. Forget about your foreign policy right now. We'll get to that in future broadcasts. But today, God is after you because of what you have done, are doing, and what you plan to do to his Chosen people, the real children of Israel, the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere. We have toiled under the whip and the lash for 400 years. And the affliction has not stopped. Genocide is in your heart for this poor and suffering people. You have done everything in your power to create mischief. Who created the Crips and the Bloods? Who created the gangs and then put hatred among the gangs that we are now with guns in our hands killing one another? That's the mischief maker. That's the bloodshedder. By telling lies, he would take a crip and drop him. This is the police. And drop the crip in the neighborhood of the blood, knowing that he would not come out alive. They would take our young men and give them drugs to sell for the police. Yes, you have done all of this evil to us. But now, God is going to bring his wrath more fully on you than you have ever seen. You may say, let's get rid of Farrakhan. Let's stop his mouth. I can't stop you if that's what you wish to do. But the moment you attempt it, you'll be stopping your own mouth. You'll be putting up your wicked pens that write evil against a righteous man. But the scripture says no weapon formed against the righteous will prosper. Yes, we're in the final judgment of this world. Well, what will 2013 bring? It's a six. The number of dissatisfaction, the number of the beast. And the beasts are working. Beast one, America. Beast two, England. Beast three. Germany, beast for Italy, and now France and Italy are juxtaposing each other to see which one will be the fourth beast. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, France is going to get out of it. Well, you better hurry, France, because you are heading now for your own destruction with the wickedness that you are doing. Now look, here is this AFRICOM. America, you have sent your wicked mischief makers 
into Africa. After you killed my brother, Gaddafi, what did you do? I heard somebody say, who let the dogs out? Well, when you kill my brother, you let the dogs loose. Everything that you have done that you thought would be in your favor is now coming against you. All your mischief making, all your putting one brother against another, one kingdom against another, one nation against another, one people against another. Keep on going because it's coming back home to you. Somebody said uh, that Farrakhan is saying that the Second Amendment has no value. I never said that. I said that if there is a well-regulated militia, the need for weapons that are the weapons of war might not be necessary. However, if you look at the militias that have formed, they are angry with their government. And I saw a Mr. Alex Jones on television recently with Pierce Morgan of CNN. And he said, before we allow you to take our guns from us, 1776 will play out again. We intend to return America, not to a democracy. You are lying to the American people. You are robbing them of democracy. This is not a democracy. This is an oligarchy that is leading America into fascism. Yes, you are stripping the American people of their rights in the name of fighting terror. You are the terrorist using your weapons of war and your mighty arsenal to terrorize the nations of the earth to submit to you and your wicked policies of divide and conquer. Yes, but it's now at your door. You are being divided and soon you will be conquered in this war that you're stirring up right now. 2013, are you ready, President Obama, to listen to your Israeli friends and lead America into war with Iran? And did you think with all your power that you will subject Iran to your power and Iran will give up? You don't know Muslims. You know those that you control. That is why Master Farad Muhammad put it up on the blackboard with your flag, America, and the flag of Islam, and he asked the question, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Survive. Do you think your people have the stomach to fight on for another decade or two? You are out of your mind. No, Americans don't want to fight an Israeli war. So if you lead them, President Obama, into such a war, listening to those who misadvise you, then you will go down in history not as the man who made peace, but a man who is bombing several countries with your drones and under your foreign policy, which Miss Hillary Clinton carried out in Libya and now in Syria. Well, Keep going. All of this will create a blowback that will destroy 
you in the end. Justice is the weapon that God is using to bring the mischief maker and the blood shedder to naught. In my next broadcast, we will go deeper into this subject, the time and what must be done. To all of you who are listening, go and tell your friends about this broadcast. And when you gather, sit and listen. When the broadcast is over, after you've recorded it, play it back. Sit around the dinner table with your family in dialogue. White and black dialogue. Mexican, Hispanic dialogue. And as you're dialoguing, watch the weather and watch the forces of nature being used in ever increasing calamitous volume against America. And to my young brothers and sisters, get on your Facebook with all your friends and tell them what I am saying and discuss it. And may Allah grant you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends, tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.